First and foremost, I'm so excited that we are back in person. And um, today I was asked to speak about our growing family. And it, it seems that we're always um, circling back to this topic. Um, but today I wanna I wanna give you some statistics and I also wanna I want us to uh, implement whatever we take home today. So family, growing family, what does the Webster Dictionary say about family as a definition? The Webster Dictionary says family is a group of two or more persons related by birth, marriage, or adoption, who live together. All in such relations, these person, these, these people um, are considered members of a family. And so as a convert, revert, new Muslim, immediately after we say our shahada, you become our family. Unfortunately, statistically, seven out of 10 reverts, converts, end up leaving Islam. Just think about that for a minute, since we are so invested in da'wah, we are so invested in conveying the message of Islam. Seven out of 10 reverts end up leaving Islam. Now the question that we need to be asking ourselves is why? Why is everyone leaving? Why is our da'wah efforts being flushed down the toilet? And I'll tell you why. Let me start with the story. Two weeks, three weeks ago, I was coming back from Dubai. And subhanAllah, you just never know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to send um, your way. And I was tired, it was a 16 hour flight. And I, as we were getting ready to depart the plane or embark the plane, I started talking to my son in Spanish and the flight attendant was standing on my left hand side and she quietly asked, where are you from? And I said, I'm Mexican. Immediately she asked, are you a convert? And I said, yes, alhamdulillah. Her emotion just woke me up. I was half asleep at that point. She said, so am I. I'm half French and half Italian. And she embraced me. She just hugged me. And subhanAllah, we exchanged rapidly our, our Instagram. And before I even got off the plane, she was already texting me. And she said she felt very lonely. She just embraced Islam a couple years ago, a few years ago. Um, and as I was going home, I couldn't take her off my mind. As she was writing to me, she was very sweet. And she said, you know, I long for a community. We, we made, a, we made a, the plan to see each other that night, but we were both exhausted. So we ended up falling asleep. And the following day, I was flying to Mexico. The last thing she wrote to me was, I make dua that we see each other again. And I said, I will make the same dua. Three weeks later, um, she texts me this past Wednesday, and she basically just said, um, I just found out that I'll be going to Dallas. I'll see you tomorrow. And that was the end of the text. The longing of family that she, the, sen the sense of disconnect, even though she lives in an Arab country, and that longing of family that most of us take for granted here in the West. And so I, it, fast forward, I went to pick her up um, and she was super excited, left her luggage in the middle of the road, came to hug me and basically started tearing up. And she said, let me go change and uh, I'll come back. She did, and the first thing I thought, Duhar is around the corner. Let me take her to Valley Ranch, which by the way, is one of the most welcoming masjids in the DFW. And I'm not saying that because Sheikh Jasser Burjass is here. 
and, um, and I belong to his community. I'm not saying that. I sincerely mean that. In 2017, I, did, um, I visited 30 mosques in 30 days, and I rated Valley Ranch one of the friendliest masjids. Anyways, I ended up meeting Sister Carla. Sister Carla and I went for some coffee, and then we ended up going to Valley Ranch. I didn't tell her who was at Valley Ranch, because our Islam, our family, shouldn't, we shouldn't base our family based on who is who in the community, or how famous, or how well known you are. We are all brothers and sisters. And so when we parked, I said, you mentioned that you always listen to Sheikh Omar Suleiman. I said, he's the resident scholar here, and um, uh, Imam uh, Sheikh Jazza Burjaz is also here. She was super excited. And so, subhanAllah, she didn't get to meet Sheikh Omar Suleiman, but she did get to meet uh, Sheikh Jasper Burjaz, who immediately invited her to the ICNA convention. That day, um, it was our, our, our visit was brief. She was tired, and I ended up dropping her off. The next day, she wanted to continue that relationship to grow that family, right? We're talking about family. And she said, you know, even though I'm a traveler, tomorrow's Thursday, can we fast together and break bread together? And I said, absolutely. We're in the month of Shawal. Let's take full advantage. See, we plan, but Allah is the best of planners. We plan to meet the following day, to open fast together, to continue to build this relationship. Unfortunately, she got dehydrated as she ended up in the hospital. And so when I text her to see what type of food she wanted uh, to eat, um, she told me she was in the hospital, she was being taken care of, and there was no need for me to come. Nevertheless, well, I stayed in touch with her. And why am I sharing this story with you in particular? Because we oftentimes don't get out of our comfort zone. We live in a bubble. We just came out of pandemic, and you, for the first time in a long time, got an opportunity to feel what the life of a revert feels like lonely, oftentimes very lonely, because we don't have families. We don't grow up knowing what Islam is. I converted in my mid-30s. So for 30 years, I lived a certain way. And unfortunately, we are also very judgmental. So this is something that we need to work on as a community, as an ummah. We need to make sure that we look inward before we look outward. And so, subhanAllah, something that Sister Carla told me that really struck my heart was basically, you know, the struggle of telling your parents when you convert. Her, her parents live in Italy, and obviously she comes from a Catholic background. Um, and so I told her, yeah, I experienced uh, hardship when I converted. As a matter of fact, my first visit to Mexico was detrimental. Uh, one of my cousins uh, uh, took off the hijab and she slapped me and she said, S you know, snap out of it. You're never going to be Arab. The ignorance of our family, right? But we have to practice sabr. So just because she slapped me, she's not my cousin any longer. And so that's not true. She's still my blood-related relative. And so when your reverts, your fellow new Muslims, have shortcomings, make mistakes, do not cut them off immediately. We need to be patient with one another, and this is lacking within our community. We immediately look at the cover of the book without even reading it, subhanAllah. And so, um, Sister Carla went home. Um, she wasn't able to come to the ICNA convention, but she is planning next year, inshallah. Um, and so, Another story I wanted to share really briefly, just for you to get a sense of what is a life of a convert and who are you to us? Because when they ask me, how is your family? I'm like, my family. My family consists of 1.8 billion Muslims around the world, even though I don't have a connection with my immediate family for many reasons. But I do have a larger family and this is what we see you as. So I hope that by today you embrace us fully Question yourself, how sincere is your takbir? So we get so excited when people take shahada, right? So question yourself, am I going to help this brother and sister? If I can't help, will I guide them to the right resources? 
Um, unfortunately, a lot of people get this misconception about Embrace. Embrace is a resource, and I, I want to thank Mass, and I want to thank Valley Ranch, who has really embraced Embrace in their communities. Um, and so, this brother took Shahada not long ago, and, you know, just think for a second. This morning, we had a convert sensitivity training um, with the youth, and, um, and it was low attended. I know it was bright and early. But one of the things I always stress is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us exactly where we need to be when we need to be. So I'm never about numbers. It's always about quality, not quantity. Anyway, this young brother, 18 years old, he embraced Islam not long ago. And right after he embraced Islam, his family kicked him out. Now, before we start um, questioning, you know, why is this brother all tattooed when he walks in the, in, the, in the masjid? Or why are his pants sagging? Or why is the sister not wearing hijab? Or why, 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 why? We should actually ask, how are they? How can I help? How can I assist? What can I bring forward? What if that was me? What if I lose my house? I mean, we just, we're just coming out of a pandemic. And so a lot of people lost their jobs. And alhamdulillah, a lot of communities came together because that's what we are. We are a big family. We're not perfect. We're not bound to be perfect. Perfection is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we are one. And when one part of our body aches, the entire ummah aches. And that's the way we should live our lives. And lastly, I want to I wanna share another story real quick um, of Sister Cheryl. Sister Cheryl, um, just to give you a perspective from an 18-year-old to a 74-year-old. She embraced Islam two years ago. And after her daughter being 25 years um, in the faith. And um, after losing her husband, she moved to the Dallas area and she became a member of Embrace, a huge supporter of Embrace at 74 years old. Sister Cheryl always had a wonderful smile. Um, everything she learned, she immediately tried to implement it to the point where sometimes they got somewhat overwhelming. For the next two years, Sister Cheryl attended all of our halakas. She learned different ways to put her hijab. She was excited about wearing a abaya for the first time. Things that sometimes we take for granted. Mind you, 74 years old. Sister Cheryl embraced Islam, we embraced her. She found a family after losing her husband. Sister Cheryl got, uh, we went one afternoon, one a Friday evening, we went out for a dessert and coffee. And subhanAllah, within hours, she fainted. She had an aneurysm, and before you knew it, she went into surgery, and she was asking for me to come to the hospital. When I came to the hospital, um, and this is one of the reasons why I'm pursuing chaplaincy. When I came to the hospital, um, I held her hand without her eyes being open. She said, Nahela, and I said, yes. That inner connection, I mean, she's not blood related, but she's still my family. I sat with her, um, she kept saying Quran, and I said, you want me to recite Quran? She goes, yes. And I recited a few verses, I held her hand. She ended up passing away. And that was one of the hardest things to do for me, washing her body. But prior to passing away, um, she was at peace. She had a lot of sakina. Uh, she was constantly in the remembrance of Allah. And she was always, her lips were always moist with Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, La ilaha illallah. And these are stories that I bring to you for us to reflect as we all have an expiration date, every single one of us, every single one of us will taste date, death. Now, the question is, what state will we be in? Have we done enough? Have we done what our creator expects from us? Have we, do we know our neighbors? Have we reached out to our neighbors? Do you know who they are? Have you met anyone here at the convention? Or are you just sticking to your little bubble? Are you coming out of your comfort zone? Are you exchanging numbers? This is extremely important, brothers and sisters, and this is how we build and cultivate our family because that's what we are. We are one family. 
And so I don't, I don't, I don't just want to tell you stories. I want to also give you a tip, a few tips. So oftentimes people ask, why is this happening? Why seven out of 10 converts leave Islam? So tip number one, we have to be consistent. We oftentimes give up on each other almost immediately. If somebody doesn't answer the phone, you disregard them. And so one of the things that we do at Embrace, we are very consistent. Rain or shine, we are always at the halakha. One or two people or no people, and just the instructor and the volunteer, the show still runs. And so consistency is not only inviting someone during the month of Ramadan. Consistency means that you are building that relationship with your new family member. So make sure that you are inviting folks to your home, that you are opening the doors to your home, but also to your heart. Be kind. The kindest man that walked this earth was Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Be kind because Allah loves kindness. Be generous. When you're talking to someone, don't be on your phone. Don't talk to people like this. Give your undivided attention. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave his undivided attention to a seven-year-old or 70-year-old. We are losing that sense, that connection. So it's very important for us, that kindness that we are looking for, that we are exercising it ourselves. Number three, be compassionate. You never know what struggles people are going, what hardships they're going through. So ask, is everything okay? How often do we pick up the phone? Everything is via text and I'm guilty. We're always running around and we just text every time we need a favor and that's reality, right? So checking up on each other is showing that compassion. You never know what someone is going through. And the last one for today, I would say be proactive. So we tend to be very reactive as a community. Things need to happen in order for all of us to start scrambling our resources and, oh, let's do a lecture on this and now mental health and this and that. We need to be proactive. We need to have an open door policy for our children. I have a 17 year old and the stories he comes to me with are heartbreaking. To hear that a father has never kissed his child is heartbreaking. When the Prophet وسلم, used to kiss his grandkids and used to play with them and they used to hop on his back while he was in sujood and we have so many examples and yet we're not implementing our sunnah. And so it's very sad to see that a 15, a 14 year old wants to run away. And what I've told my son, tell them to run away to our home where they'll be safe. So have that open door policy, speak to your children. We're living in a very difficult time, brothers and sisters. And if we're not there for our children, who will be? We need to make sure we exercise this, inshallah. And we do that with sincerity and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And last but not least, when we, are, uh, when we are asked to give advice, think twice and don't give unsolicited advice. So one of the things that reverts often come to me and why they don't want to go to the masjid, it's because an uncle or an auntie are giving unsolicited advice without knowing their current situation. So again, it's important for us to get to know one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in verse 49, um, ayah uh, 13, that he created us into nations and tribes to get to know one another. And last but not least, you know, oftentimes we think money can buy, money buys everything, but in actuality, money doesn't buy manners, doesn't buy morals, it doesn't buy respect, character, it doesn't buy common sense, trust, patience, class, integrity, and love. And these are all components that every family longs for. 
My beloved brothers and sisters, I love you all for the sake of Allah. Take care of each other. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.